Really quickly, go with me to the Bible. 1 Samuel chapter 30. A familiar text for those who love the book of Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I'm going to start reading at verse 8. And if the Lord say the same, we will end at verse 13. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8 to verse 13. I'm going to ask if you will stand with me for the reading of God's word. If you have it, I want you to signify by saying, I have the bread. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued, yeah. he and 400 men, for 200 had to stay behind because they were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David right. and gave him bread and he did eat. They made him drink water. They gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. For he had ate no bread nor drank any water for three days and three nights. Verse 13. And David said unto him, Who do you belong to? Right. And whence art thou? And he says, I'm a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite, and my master left me because three days ago I fell sick. Right. I want you to help me for a moment and share the topic with the person beside you. Tell them, I'm in recovery. I'm in recovery. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm in recovery. I'm in recovery. Um, our churches, especially in this generation, are conference heavy. Oftentimes, we are very weak in evangelism and, and fail miserably in discipleship. But we have conferences for all things church. And I'm not being critical about it. I'm really analyzing why is it that we are still after being saved, still pursuing all of these avenues of identity. Because if Jesus is enough and you have him, why are you still f switching churches every three weeks? If Jesus is enough and you have him, why are you so easy to slip into depression? Because the truth is, the truth is, we are running here and there, to and fro, trying to discover us. And if I don't know who I am by myself, I'll take on the cloak of the people I'm around and lose myself there. Mm. We want to know, what is our calling? What is our assignment? I mean, I've heard some things, right? Um, We've heard some prophecies. We've had some dreams. We've had some visions. But the truth is, we're still trying to find out what came from God and what came from us. Mm. You know, I heard what they said, but I need to know for myself, what is my calling? Because some people are upset with God because he didn't bring to pass what they said, he said. Wow. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> but God is not obligated. 
to bring what you said to pass. He's only obligated to his own word. The grass withers, hallelujah, and the flowers fade, but his word, his word, his word. We really want to know what is our calling? What is our assignment? Because some of us have been so overly exposed to other people's lives that we find ourselves wanting to do something that we were never called to do. Mm. Mm. And you'll never be successful at somebody else's calling. The worst thing that can ever happen for you is for you to be productive at something that you were never called to do. Because being productive at something that you were never called to do gives you a false sense of pleasing God. Short-lived victories. Something that you can't sustain. Mm. So then, Bishop is one thing to identify that challenge, but tell me, what is my calling? What anointing it is that I supposedly carry? Well, so you don't have to sign up for another conference or buy another book, which I do have some books for sale at the church. One of the best ways to discover your mantle, your anointing, and your assignment is to look at your warfare. Mm. Mm. Look at look at your warfare. Evidently, there must be something to you. While you're scratching your head trying to hide and blend, some of you go through things from the time you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed at night and if the enemy can't mess with you while you're standing on your feet he'll try to attack you in your sleep somebody shout I must be anointed I must be anointed because there are people who are intimidated by me and they have more than what I have I, I must be anointed because there are people who are jealous of me and I'm looking at my life and I don't see anything to be jealous about I must be anointed because all I want to do is just live my life and mind my business and there are people who I don't know by name having discussions and group chats Simon Simon the devil desires to have you I feel my strip coming out and desire to sift you as we give God a praise right now Simon Simon the devil desires to have you and sift you come on give God a praise right now why should I praise God because the devil wants me because if God says he wants you that means he don't have you out of all the crazy stuff that's going on in your mind and all of the warfare you have to deal with your spirit i need you to scream with somebody tell them i still belong to god still belong to god your warfare will announce your anointing if you have a deliverance anointing you have to deal with the Pharaoh like Moses. Moses had to deal with Pharaoh because he carried an anointing of deliverance on him. If you're truly a prophet, you have to deal with Jezebel. Who tries to use manipulation to keep you trapped in your cave. Glory be to God. If you have a messianic anointing, you'll deal with the spirit of Herod. They want to try to kill you even before you're born. Tell somebody I must be anointed. Even if you have a Davidic anointing, you'll have to deal with Saul and deal with David. Because it's one thing when I have to rebuke demons. It's another thing when I have to rebuke people. But what happens when you're anointed and you have to rebuke yourself? I just need some honest people in here. I need you to be honest with your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I'm anointed. 
but I am a mess. Come on, get free in here. Come on, tell, tell, come on, tell somebody I'm anointed and I got some strange and funny ways. I'm anointed and some days I feel it and sometimes I don't. I'm anointed and sometimes I got a word for everybody else and I'm scratching my head about what God wants to do with me. David has to deal with Saul. What are you saying? That's when you're anointed as somebody's divine replacement. Mm. Saul is still on the throne that David is anointed for. Mm. You don't know what that feels like until you've had to serve people who hate you. Serve people who hope you fail. Serve people who want you fired. Come on. You don't know what it feels like. You don't know what it feels like to serve and dodge. I need you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you don't get to choose your assignment. All you can do is choose your surrender because there's some people in this room you have resigned in your head about 10 times and you said I don't have to do this, I don't have to deal with this but every time you turn around you back on your post. Stop apologizing because you said yes. The Bible said David is a man after God's own heart. What does that look like? That's not about his songs. That's not about his instrument, uh, his instrument playing. It wasn't about his poetry. How is David a man after God's own heart? Because David doesn't want to see Saul punished. He wants to see Saul converted. So I know there won't be a much of a shout right there. Because it's easy for some of us to sit back and wait for revenge to happen on somebody's life. You waiting for God to destroy somebody. But when you got a heart after God, even when people have done you dirty, my God, you can honestly say, I don't hate anybody. I don't want nothing bad. To, come on, what my Holy Ghost feel, people? I don't want nothing bad to happen to anybody. I need you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, God did this to me. Because some of your family members think you crazy. Some of your friends get mad at you because you speak to people who you know don't like you but this is just who I am how they handle me is a reflection of them but how I handle them is a reflection of my God God did this to me 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 I'll make I'll visit them in the hospital. Come on. And I'll show up at their funeral. God, hallelujah. God did this to me. And this is David's posture. This is the warfare he has to deal with. To the point. David is anointed to be king, but Saul is on the throne, and Saul knows. When David has his own inward complexities. The opposition knows to the point David had to finally make a decision to pull back and withdraw uh, to help me stay on task tonight I'll just give you three points and I'll finish number one sometimes you have to pull away to protect your testimony And it ain't because I'm weak and it's not because I'm scared. I need some people to be honest with me in here. In this last season, God had to shut your mouth to save your future. I knew y'all 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 hear the Holy Ghost say everything else, but have you ever heard the Holy Ghost say, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up? Have you ever typed out a whole Facebook status and before you push post, the Holy Ghost said, backspace, backspace, back, delete, delete, delete. God was saving your future. Don't ever give a platform to your critics. Don't ever give a platform to your haters or your naysayers. Sometimes you got to pull away. Sometimes you got to coach yourself down. Come on. 
hallelujah sometimes you got to remind yourself hallelujah that's not who you are you got to remind yourself that you got discipline and temperance you got to hey come on you got to remind yourself that don't get depleted fighting battles that god told never told you to fight you got to know tell your neighbor pull away pull away pull away if you got to get in the car and drive around the block a few times be willing to take a break and catch your breath so you don't mess up your future True strength is not exemplified in one's power of force, but rather in their power of restraint. You got to see past this moment. You got to see. So David can fight him. I mean, you heard the song, right? Saul has killed his thousands. David has killed his ten thousands. David can take him out. But the Lord spoke to him and said, touch not. Hold on, what? What? I'm the anointed. And he's trying to kill me. And you're going to tell me to let my trouble live? See, because there are moments where people would try to destroy you with the lie. When you could mess up their life with the truth. Come on. This is a receipt generation. You better be very careful. You got to be very, very careful. Touch not my anointing. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, even my trouble is anointed. And when God has anointed your trouble, that means your trouble can't kill you. When God has anointed your opposition, see, this is a challenge. We have a bad, we have bad theology when it comes to Satan. I mean, I think it's this, these animations that have kind of given us a viewpoint of Satan and God and, and the contention. We put God and Satan on the same level. But some of us haven't read the Bible. He's already, he's already defeated. What are you saying? What are you saying? The punishment of Satan is that Satan serves the purpose of God. That means there's nothing that's going on in your life that does not first come past God. When you get that revelation, you'll begin to declare, you thought it evil towards me. You did it to try to destroy me, but God set it up for my good. I want, a, I want about 30 people in here. I'm going to test out your theology. I want you to praise God for the last bad thing that happened. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I said, open up your mouth and praise God for what made you cry. Because until you get some ashes, you don't have, you don't have nothing to get beauty out of. Come on. Somebody open your mouth uh. David pulled away he pulled back and other men came with him but let's look at the demographics of some of these men yeah David they were treating you wrong I saw how Saul was treating you. We got your back. We're going with you. But these were people who owed Saul money. And some of us have to have a revelation of our circle. Now, I'm not one of those people that go around saying, cut this one off, cut this one off, cut this. Because if you got discernment and wisdom, some of those people would never have access to you. After a while, it's not about what they did to you. It's about your lack of discernment. Oh, the church didn't shut down on me in here. I need you to look at somebody to the left and the right of you. Tell them, choose wisely. I'm in a season in my life. Everybody can be close up on me. It's not that I'm better than anybody else. It's because of what I'm carrying. Jesus had a multitude that followed him. And then out of the multitude, he had 70. 
Then he had 12 and he had three. And some of us will mess up when we try to force the 70 into the 12. And try to force the 12 into the three. Some of the people that told your secrets were not being malicious. They just didn't have capacity. And the mere fact that they tell all their business should have been a sign to you that they couldn't handle yours. Be careful. Be very careful about those who try to make alliances with you. Don't get to cut everybody off. But you do need to have a revelation of who's around you. Glory be to God. That's why I understand everybody is not anointed to serve leaders. I don't know where it became popular in church. Where everybody want to be an armor bearer and, a, and an agitator. I mean an agitant. It's more than cords. Come on, it's more than cords, seals, and suits. Come on. I want to know, can you carry me in the spirit? Some of the pastor's best armor bearers are people who never rode in the car with them, ain't never went to their house, ain't never went to, come on, rode in their car, ain't never set out to eat. But when you're a true armor bearer, you can be at home and pick up your pastor's spirit. I need to hear the sound of the Peters in this room. I'm too much of a Peter to ever be a Judas. Come on, I, Pastor, I may not say things right sometimes. I may not, I, come on, I got some stuff with me, but I'm too much of a Peter to ever be a Judas. You got to pick it up in the spirit. I mean, you don't need to have a whole bunch of meetings with your leader. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Judges, there when they had the sword of Gideon and the sword of the Lord. See, some people only have a sword of the Lord, but they don't have a sword for the leader. And then there's some people who have a sword for the, for, for the leader, but they don't have a sword for the Lord. The, the, those who have a sword for the leader and not a sword for the Lord, if pastor not going to be here, they not going to be here. They can only hear from pastor, but you don't honor pastor if you don't honor who pastor sent. Don't put me above God because God will take me out. Glory be to God. Mm. Everybody can't handle your humanity and still respect your divinity. Tell your neighbor, use wisdom, use wisdom. And so why David has ran from Saul with this ragtag group he decides then that he's going to make an alliance with the Philistines. The Philistines are the sworn enemies of Israel. You must be careful that when you're in your in-between season that you don't make unholy alliances. Now, some of us in here, we're shouting but if you be honest, there's a residue of unholy alliances. Oh, we know it. Because some of y'all were best friends just a few weeks ago. And now you can't stand each other. Something happened. Oh, my God. Woo. Unholy alliances. Somebody getting tight on me in here. I feel you. But I said unholy alliances. Some, some, so many of us are now making connections according to the flesh but not according to the spirit and that's why it's okay to warn new converts about old saints I used to feel some kind of way about it no it's okay that when somebody new joined the church you tell them no you stay over here with us you stay over here because we always talk about how the world corrupts us but most of us that got corrupted did not get corrupted by somebody in the street because some of us been in the church all our lives we got corrupted in the house unholy alliances because everybody in the church is not saved everybody in the church is not delivered Oh, foolish Galatians.
nations. It didn't say what hindered you. It said who? Unholy alliances. You were running well. Unholy alliances. You love the church, but now you're looking strange. You love Bishop. Now you're acting a little awkward. You're acting a little officer. Who hindered you? Because it's a bad thing to trash a place you're drawing from. It shows, it shows some sort of dysfunction. That you would sit it up under the word and receive the word and shout and fall out and run around. And after you've been in church for three hours, you lose it all at the restaurant in 20 minutes. The devil is a liar. Don't allow. That's my number two. Don't allow your emotions to cause you to make unholy alliances. Because the Philistines are enemies of God. Because life's chaos can produce muddy water. It will make you mislabel people. You will call your friends your enemies. And you'll call your enemies your friend. Woo. You got to be careful when you start going through strange transitions. You got to be careful where you lay your head. You got to be careful who's your counsel. I need to be connected. When I'm going through moments in my life, seasons I've never been in before, when I'm going through those moments, I get near seasoned people. People who have proven themselves in my life through more than one season. But some of you will abandon your spiritual fathers for coaches and mentors. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you won't hear your family and you will ignore your parents and you ignore your siblings for somebody you met on Facebook and now you're acting like everybody is jealous of you. We're not jealous of you, but we know your potential. This ain't the first time you say you fell in love. Don't allow your emotions to cause you to make unholy alliances and the Bible says when he told the Philistines I will fight with you the Bible says the soldier said um, pastor <laughs> commander king you like David but we remember we remember we remember how many of our brothers David killed. I'm not willing to fight with him. It wasn't that long ago. And this is what happens with us. Oftentimes, our zeal and our pastoral heart will blur our prophetic vision. Because the truth is, many of us want the best. And we want to believe the best in everybody. But in all of your gifts, the gift of faith, the gift of miracles, the gift of prophecy in tongues, you better have the gift of discernment. You need to be able to discern because people will say the right stuff with the wrong motives. Um, Hallelujah. The only way an assassin is successful is they must first learn your pattern. And they'll learn your pattern. Hallelujah. To take advantage of you in a vulnerable moment. Hallelujah. Some of us, you got to be careful of a serpent spirit. Because a serpent spirit will destroy you by embracing you. Hallelujah. They'll tell you all the right stuff. I need, I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, keep your eyes open. Huh? Keep your ears open. Keep your spirit alert. Stay sober. Hallelujah. You got to be very careful about individuals. Saying the right things. For what a corrupted heart. Philistine said, I'm not willing. I'm not willing to fight with David. And so he said, Will. David was confused, disappointed, but he told him and his men, Let's go back to Ziklag. Uh, I'm finished now. When they went back to Ziklag, in the distance, they saw smoke. 
Why? Because they left their assignment exposed. I would like us to be reminded that healthy churches are made up of healthy families. Healthy families are made up of healthy marriages. And healthy marriages are made up of healthy people. The reason why your marriage may be sick is because you may be sick. And a lot of the complexities in our churches is because pastors, instead of raising up armies, hallelujah, mm, instead of raising up armies for the cross, we're having daycares. And, <laughs> and we're managing dysfunctions. And now people have cast an expectation on the church that we were never assigned to do. My goodness. The reason why we have to call our pastors, our daddy, and our mothers, oh my God, is because there's dysfunctions in our homes. Instead of you trying to make Bishop your daddy, ask God to reconcile you to your father. Y'all not sending them in here. Hallelujah. You love the church mothers, but you don't speak to your own blood mother. Hallelujah. You hanging out with all of your sister friends in church, but you're not, you're not, you haven't forgiven your own siblings. It's dysfunctional. We have left our assignment exposed in the name of ministry. But I refuse to let my children die and go to hell while our church. Y'all not sending them in here. Hallelujah. Church. The reason why I believe in prayer today is not because of church. It's not because of church. It's because we will pour. But I would hear my mother talking and I would go in the room and find her on her knees talking to God. The reason why I believe in prayer today is because I thought Papa pulled up and my mama was talking to my grandfather and I would go to the door excited to see my grandfather but my mother was standing on the porch with her face to the trees with her mouth open saying God you've got to make a way for us. I, I, the reason why I believe because if church was on it's the place we prayed I would think church is somewhere we go. And not something that we are. And we've left our assignment exposed. But I need you to look at your neighbor and I want you to say something bold. Tell them I refuse to lose another family member to the devil. I need somebody in this room to open up your mouth right now for the family that you're connected to. Come on, the ones you were born into, the one that adopted you. I need to open up your mouth. Some of you got some siblings that are not saved. And I need you to open up your mouth and release a sound because I'm believing God that this year, somebody shout, this year, I need you to shout for everybody that got your last name. I need you to open up your mouth and shout right now. I'm, I'm fighting for the city that God has put. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, when he got there, he saw smoke in the distance. And when he, the closer he got, he realized that the enemy, the enemy had burned down the city and taken their families captive. Had taken the families captive. Burned down the city and took the families captive captive took the wives and the children she took them captive and now as a man you have to consider what is the enemy doing to my wife what is the enemy doing with my children and the bible said that the men these warrior men begin to cry and i know culturally we say men don't cry but that's a lie. Men grieve. It may not come in the form of water down our eyes. But men grieve. 
if they have to put their head under the hood of a car men uh, men grieve it's why some ended up in a bed with somebody that didn't belong to them because they did not know how to process their emotions I know you judge me because I smoked a little weed but some of us weren't looking for sin we were looking for relief we were trying to process everything that was going on Because when you're the leader, who do you call? Who prays for the one who prays for everybody else? Who encourages the encourager? Huh. The men begin to cry. And in their emotions, they begin to discuss among themselves. It's David's fault. He never asked them to come with him. But that's how folk will do. Yeah. Yeah. That any time something goes wrong in their life, yes, they'll try to misplace the guilt. Yeah. And what they'll do, they will attack the person who is the closest to them. They can't put their hands on God, so they'll put their mouth on you. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it takes a strong person to be a leader. It takes, a, it, huh, it takes a lot of strength to be me because there are moments where I've had to take the blame for stuff I had nothing to do with. The one time I said, no, I'm a bad person. And you ain't paid me back when you said when you got your stimulus check you was going to pay me. You didn't pay me now. Scripture said, they said, we ought to kill David. And David went before the Lord. Because what David is saying, I'm at a season of my life where I'm not willing to make another decision unless I get the approval of God. David began to pray and seek the face of the Lord. The Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. And he asked the Lord, shall I? Oh, I feel the Lord right here. Shall I pursue? Because I don't have any more time to waste. Shall I pursue? I don't have any more energy to push in the wrong direction. Shall I? I don't have any more time to throw away. Shall I pursue? And the Lord told him, pursue. For you shall recover. Whew. You shall recover all. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I know where I am. Tell him I'm in recovery. My God. Because the truth is, we haven't totally unpacked the trauma of our past season. And the trauma of our past season goes beyond COVID. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I've gone through some things that everybody don't know about. See, people know the headlines, but they don't know the details. There are many of you that is in this room, you've had your own many breakdowns because you couldn't afford a whole breakdown because too many people were dependent on you. But I need you to scream at somebody tell them, I know, I know. There are some things that only me and God know about because the reality of my life is that there are more people that can trust me, I need y'all to talk to me in here, than I can trust them and so now I'm dealing with it I, I got past it but it don't mean I got over it just because I don't cry about it don't mean it doesn't affect me I need you to put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder tell him I survived the surgery but I'm in recovery I'm in recovery I've gone through some things it costs me to forgive people who didn't apologize it costs me to speak to people who hoped I failed it costs me to stand in the camp you haven't served God until you've served God while God was silent my God some anybody can worship him when you're standing in the Torah anybody can bless him when you're in the poetry anybody can give him glory when you're standing in history but can you praise him when you're in the intertestamental 
mental period when you're locked between Malachi and Matthew and God ain't said nothing I need you to run over to somebody and tell them I know how to praise in the gap I know how to praise in the middle and I want to tell somebody in this room if you haven't heard God say nothing in a while scream at somebody tell them hold on to the last thing he said I said, hold on to the last thing he said. I'm in recovery. Hey. Oh, I'm finished. I said, I'm in recovery. Scream at somebody. Tell them I'm in recovery. I, I cried more times than I could count. I cried until there were no tears left. Until all I could do was make the sound. But I need to hear the sound of those who survived. Season that's going to could have destroyed you. Situations that could have sidetracked you. Somebody shout, I'm in recovery. I'm in recovery. And the Bible said, David start moving at the word of the Lord. I need you to pull on somebody and tell them God is getting you out of stuck. Whew. Some of you, your trauma got you stuck. You don't know who you can trust. Your trauma got you stuck. You don't even know if you're called anymore. But I need you to push somebody. Tell them, come on here. Come on. Uh, snap out of it. Uh, and go at the word of the Lord. Uh, I feel a movement now. Uh, taking place in my spirit. Uh, God has spoken. Uh, but twice have I heard it. Uh, power belongs to God. Uh, David said, I'm going after it. Uh, and I don't know who's going with me. Uh, but one thing I can testify. Uh, as long as God... Um, uh, it's on my side there is no weapon that's formed against me that shall be able to prosper lay your hands on your neighbor's shoulder and say neighbor all of heaven is backing you up hallelujah if god is for you who, who can be against you your neighbor and say go after it yeah. everything the devil stole I'm going after it I got a word from the Lord I said I got a word from the Lord heaven and earth can pass away but the word but the word but the word but the word man should not live by prayer alone but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God will you step out of your seat and tell somebody go after it stop crying about it and go after it stop rehearsing the trauma and go after it stop having a pity party push somebody tell them go 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 But he delivered me. Go ahead and cry. But don't cry so long that you lose your strength. The Bible said this poor man, poor man cried. But the Lord, the Lord heard him and he delivered him from all his fears. I need you to tell somebody. Say somebody. I know what he told me. Uh, Y'all didn't say it right. Uh, tell somebody, shout somebody. Come on, shout somebody. I know what he told me. He told me to pursue. Uh, David said, I don't know how it's going to happen, uh, but I'm going after it. Uh, I don't know uh, where the money is coming from, uh, but I'm going after it. Uh, I don't know how the credit's going to look. Uh, but I'm going back to school. I don't know where the finance is coming. But I'm going to close on the property. Tell your neighbor, go after it. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Ten thousand at thy right hand. But it will not come nigh thee. Tell your neighbor, I got a word. David, he started moving with his men, 
but there were 200 uh, that could not go uh, because they lost their strength uh, but I need you to grab somebody uh, and I want you to pull on them uh, and tell them let's go let's go uh, let's go let's go uh, I believe uh, there's something uh, that God wants to put uh, in your hand uh, I believe uh, that recovery uh, it's the inheritance of the people of God. I declare unto you, if you go after it, God is going to give you victory. I need you to point in your section and tell them all I see is victory. You will not fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. Oh my God. David said, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And some of you, this kind of word is hard for you. You said, preacher, leave me alone. Let me sit here in my pity party. Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. But I come to frustrate you. I know it's costly to believe God. But I need you to scream at somebody. Huh? Tell them one more time. Huh? I dare you huh? to open up your mouth huh? and believe God. Huh? One more time. Huh? Walk around it. Hey. One more time. Huh? Anoint it. Hey. One more time. Huh? Pray about it. One more time. Huh? I've been a lot of places. China, I've been to Mongolia, I got a church in Canada, in Canada, I've been to Brazil, Sao Paulo, Rio, El Salvador, Guatemala, I've been all over the world, I've been to London and saw the bridge, and out of all the places that I've been, there's one thing I've never seen, I've never seen, the righteous hey. righteous forsaken no his seed peg your prayer scream at your neighbor and tell him I still believe God I still believe it's been a long time coming but I still believe I've had to struggle but I still believe Lord Belief, but help out my unbelief. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is, and he's a reward of them that diligently, diligently seek him. Somebody shout, I'm in the recovery. I survived. I survived the surgery. Some people. Some people committed suicide. Some people walked away. But tell your neighbor, I'm in recovery. No. This, uh, this sermon, and I'll close now because uh, I don't want to misrepresent the message because this sermon really won't about David. This sermon really won't about Saul, to be honest with you. David had a word, but no direction. What do you do when you have a word from the Lord and you say, okay, how though? Where? He had no direction. But out of obedience, he started moving. He says, I don't know who took my family. I don't know where they took them. So I know I just preach, I'm in recovery. But it's really not about David. It's really not about Saul. The Bible says, while David and his men were searching... 
they ran up on a black boy down in the middle of a field. And although David has an agenda, he stopped long enough to serve somebody else's need. Don't get so consumed with your agenda that you don't serve on the way. Well, that ain't my calling. That ain't my assignment. Huh? Don't get so calm. Don't get don't get so distracted by where you got to go that you don't you're not sensitive to somebody else's plight. The Bible says David stopped and asked him, "What's going on with you?" He couldn't even talk. They had to give him bread. They had to give him water. They had to give him figs and grapes. And when his light came back in him, he said, I got sick the other day. He says, my master came through here, burned down somebody's city, took somebody's wives and children, but because I got sick, I was an inconvenience. They left me in the middle of this field to die. And David looked at him and says, which way did they go? What some of you don't realize is what you're looking at right now may not be the room you want. But it could be the door. Be careful how you handle it. Some of us have opportunities in front of us and we have turned them down. We have ignored them. We have overlooked them. That's what I'm telling you. Be nice to everybody. Speak to everybody. Because you don't know who God is going to use to connect you. This is a season of divine connections. It would have been easy for David to get so bitter because of how Saul did him. And so bitter because of how the men were conspiring against him. That he would have put up so many walls that he would have missed that moment. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, don't let it make you bitter. That you'll put up so many walls that you end up in your own prison. Hey. Mm. That's good work. So I want to say, y'all stand. I'm finished. Stand up real quick. I want to say this to you because I want to pray over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you. I want to pray over you. You don't get to quit. All of you who've been gradually pulling back or reconsidering some things, you don't get to quit, but you do get to catch your breath. Because this last season cost you some things. This last season has given you PTSD. And you are punishing your future because of what your past did. Tell somebody, you're not there anymore. Tell them you're not there. Woo. Thank you. Recovery. Mm. Recovery. Resuscitation. Yes, God. Oh, my Dios. Will you lay hands on the shoulder of the people on your row? I want to pray right now. There's a Scottish author says, be kind to everybody. Because everybody is fighting battles that you don't know about. Mm. 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 Some of you have said, if one more thing happens. You haven't worshipped God 
until you've been disappointed by God. Yes. Yes, yes. Now, I know some of you that sounds irreverent, but I'm just saying out loud what you thought and how you felt. Until you have prayed for God to heal somebody. And you've had to stand by their casket. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it cost me something. Oh, yes, they call me strong, but I call him Jesus. It the only reason why I kept standing is because he was holding me up. Oh, my God. Oh, my new Oh, la la maya. And the Bible says, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to ask God to release a wind of refreshing in this room. Everybody that got a prayer language, open up your mouth right now. Come on, that's it. Come on. Woo, shalamasya. I'm asking God to give you a fresh wind tonight. To he'll resuscitate you. Elijah, you got to live. I know you feel like quitting, but you got to live because of the journey that's in front of you. You still got kings you got to coronate. You got prophets you got to raise up. Come on, open up your mouth, saints. Oh, my dear Sandia. I'm asking God to, to give strength to your strength tonight. For all the things you have to carry, not just for you, but the things you have to carry for the people who are connected to you. For the secrets you have to carry. Hey, for the pain you have to carry. Hey. God wants you to recover tonight. God wants you to recover tonight. Some of us have been carrying the trauma in our spirit. God told me to come for the person who's been dealing with anxiety. Anxiety at such a rate. It seems like your heart is having palpitations. God says he wants to raise that up off of you tonight. Somebody open up your mouth in the Holy Ghost. You've been strong for everybody else. But tonight, let God be strong for you. Come on, forget your church title. Come on, forget your church title. Just open up your mouth. There's a refreshing wind. Somebody you watching online right now. And there's a wind of the Lord coming in your room. Hey, there's a wind of the Lord. Now you were praying for yourself. Now I want you to open up your mouth for the person you're touching right now. I'm speaking strength to the left and the right of me. We need you to live. Hey, we need you to live. Come on, come on, come on. Live. Come on, live. Live. I'm speaking life now. I'm speaking life now. Oh. Oh, I feel the Lord. Oh. Come on, up and out of your belly. Oh. Turn it, God. Turn it, God. Ho! Oh. Turn it, God. Ho! Oh. Oh. Shana Mama Mana. There it is. There it is. Somebody, your joy is coming back to you tonight. Your strength is coming back to you tonight. You've been depleted. You've been mentally exhausted. Ho! Oh. Hey! But it's coming back tonight. Oh, there it is. Come on, Leah Prophet. Leah Prophet. Leah Prophet. Shana mama 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 mama. Oh, I feel the Lord now. Oh, I feel the Lord. Oh, mama na na yeah yeah. Oh, mama na na yeah. Oh, oh na 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 yeah. Bokosha. Oh la 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 ma ya. Open up your mouth. <laughs> Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth, hey! Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth, hey! Oh, Zion! Come on, Zion! Come on, Zion! Come on, Zion! Hey, 
Hey, this is Bishop S.Y. Younger. Thank you for watching this video. And now what I need you to do is like and subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can continue to get more inspirational, motivational, and gospel content in your direction.